Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. For this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a fireball throw mechanic for any 2D platformer like Mario. So here I have my 2D platformer project that I've been working on, and I recently made it so that my player can throw fireballs. Now the first thing that you'll need for this mechanic is the projectile itself. For this I have my fireball, which is a 3D sphere with a fireball material, a rigid body, a sphere collider, and a fire particle system. Now in this video I'm not going to show you how to create the visuals, as you can just use a 3D sphere for now. But you will need to have a rigid body and a sphere collider. Once you have your projectile created, the next thing that you'll need to do is create a script for your projectile. So here I have a script which I've called throw. Let's go ahead and open it up in our coding environment. For this script you'll need three variables. The first is a rigid body which I've called my RB. The next is a serialized field of type float called throw speed and the last is a serialized field of type game object called burst. Once you have these variables the next thing that we need to do is initialize our rigid body and we'll do this within the start function. So I have my RB equals git component and we're looking for a rigid body. The next thing that we need to do is set the initial velocity of our projectile. So here I have my RB dot velocity equals transform dot forward multiplied by throw speed. The reason why I'm using transform dot forward instead of vector 3 dot forward is because vector 3 dot forward will give you a velocity relative to world space and transform dot forward will give you a forward velocity relative to this object itself. This means that as we change the rotation of this object it'll also change the direction that this object is pointing and the direction that this object is traveling forward. Now the next thing that we need to do in this script is handle the interaction between the projectile and the objects that it hits. For this, we'll use the onCollisionEnter function. This is a special function that is triggered whenever the collider of this object hits another physical object. This function is a private void function. The name of the function needs to be spelled exactly the same. And then it requires one parameter of type collision, which I've called collision. Inside this function, all we're doing for now is instantiating our burst game object and destroying this object. And so I'm calling the instantiate function, and I'm passing in the burst variable for our first parameter, and then passing in transform.position and transform.rotation. This will instantiate the game object that we put in our burst variable at the exact position and rotation of our fireball. The last thing that we need to do for this function and script is call the destroy function, and we're passing in this dot game object which will destroy the fireball itself. Now if you want to create more interactions than this between your fireball and specific objects in your game, such as enemies, you'll want to add that code between these two lines. And the typical syntax for coding those interactions is to first check what the game object that your fireball collides with is. This requires an if statement where you can check to see if collision.transform.tag is equal to something like an enemy. After which you could do a git component for something like an enemy script. Then you could use the enemy script to subtract damage from the enemy's health. Now at this point I'll save this script and we'll go back to Unity. Once back in Unity with the fireball selected you'll want to attach your throw script and I've set the throw speed to 10 and you'll need to set the burst variable to the next object that we'll create. But one more component that I have on my fireball is an audio source with a fireball sound effect. And here's what that effect sounds like. This is just a free sound effect that I downloaded off the internet. I'll provide a link to this sound effect in the description below. But for this audio source, you'll want to make sure that it's set to play on awake and that it is not looping. Now once you've created all this, you'll want to make sure that you create a prefab out of your fireball game object. Now the next thing that we need to do to create our fireball throw mechanic is create a fireball burst. This is another fire particle effect, but all of the admissions for these particle effects are set to burst admissions missions and they are not looping. This is what my burst effect looks like but once again I'm not going to show you how to create the visuals for this effect in this video. The last thing that this game object needs is another audio source with a different audio clip. Here's what this audio clip sounds like. 
And this is just another free fire effect that I downloaded off the internet. And there's one more thing that we need to do for this object before we make a prefab out of it. And that is to create what I like to call an explosion script. Now this is a really simple script that I like to attach to pretty much any explosion that happens once per object. And this is just to clean up our scene. For this, I have one variable. It's a serialized build of type float called destroy time and then all we have to do is in the start function called the destroy function and we'll pass in this dot game object and for the second parameter we'll pass in our destroy time this will make it so that the object this script is attached to will be destroyed after a certain amount of time so once we have the script we'll go back to unity now we'll want to make sure that we attach this script to our fireball burst game object and then we'll set the destroy time to something like five after which you can make a prefab out of this game object. Once you've made this into a prefab, you'll need to select your fireball prefab and add your fireball burst prefab to the burst variable in the throw script. So now that we've created our projectile and our projectile explosion, let's look at the actual throw mechanic. For this, I have a script called player combat, which I'll open up inside my coding environment. Now, I have a bunch of other code inside this script that we don't need to look at. But for the throw mechanic, you'll need to have reference to your projectile prefab, which my reference is actually inside this ability script. But for now, you could just create a serialized field of type game object, and you could call it projectile or fireball. The next variable that you need is reference to the origin of where you want your fireball to instantiate from. And so I have this variable here, which is a serialized field of type transform called origin. Once you have at least those two variables, I'll scroll down to my throw attack function. Now inside this function, I have some code for changing the rotation of my origin transform. But I'm not going to go through that in this video. Instead, we'll just look at how to instantiate the fireball prefab. For this, you'll need to start by reading in the player's input. Now I'm using the new input system for Unity. So I have this variable called left click input, which is set to one when the player clicks the left mouse button. But if you're not using the new input system, you could simply just use if input dot get mouse button down and pass in a zero. So when the player presses the left mouse button, all we have to do is instantiate our fireball prefab. And so here I'm calling the instantiate function and I'm getting reference to my fireball prefab, which is contained inside this current ability script. But for you, you could just call the fireball variable that we created. For the second parameter, we want to instantiate the fireball prefab onto the position of our origin transform. So you could just put in origin.position. But where I'm instantiating my fireball is off of the first child of my origin transform because the positioning is a little bit different. So I have origin.getChild passing in a zero dot position. And for the last parameter, all we have to do is pass in the rotation of our origin game object. So I have origin.rotation. Now remember, our fireball will always travel in its four Forward direction. And so as the position and rotation of our origin changes, it'll change the starting position and starting direction of where our fireball travels. Now make sure that you check out the post for this video on our website at www.infogamerhub.com and sign up to become a member on our website so that you can get the code for this tutorial. And I'll make sure that I write out the code for this part so it's a little more straightforward. But once you have your throw mechanic scripted, let's go back to Unity. Inside Unity, you'll want to make sure that you set your fireball variable, but in my case I have this current ability which is set to a fireball ability and if I click on that script an object you can see here I have my ability prefab which is our basic fireball you'll then also want to make sure that you set your origin variable now at this point I'm gonna play through my project one more time so that you can see how it's working so once again don't pay attention to the additional mechanics that are working in my project such as getting the fireball to fire in the direction of my mouse position but pay attention to how when I left click with my mouse, it instantiates a fireball at our origin. The fireball then travels in its forward direction. And when it collides with another object, it instantiates a fire burst prefab and destroys itself.
Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create a fireball throw mechanic. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Also make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.